This is the dream exercise. This is Paul F. Williams. Polly. So my dream goal desire is I want to share my creative gifts with the world. As I've said before, I, I think I've been creative uh, as long as I can remember um, with art, with music, with food, with literature, uh, everything. And my goal is I want to share my creative gifts with the world. I want people to see things uh, in a creative light that can be highly transformative and can enhance the human experience incredibly. I want to connect people through creativity as well um, uh, because I think it is an incredible connector. Um, when we watch film or we go to an uh, art gallery, um, we share ideas and thoughts and we see things that we've never seen before. And uh, I think that's tremendously uh, important. And I, um, I've said before, my, my true essence is, um, my, um, my essential truth is I, I need to create exquisite experiences. Um, it brings me the greatest joy to create something that is exquisite that people look at and say, that's amazing. And creativity does that um, more than anything. So uh, in order to achieve these goals, my, my main goal is I have a vehicle, a business idea that I call, and as I mentioned, my name is Paul F. Williams. People call me PFW. My business, my registered business name is Polly's Food Works, and those are my initials, PFW. And my dream is um, to grow this business. Um, it's a beverage business to begin with. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Uh, but I want to grow this business so that um, it can afford me the ability to uh, pursue my other creative interests in music. I want to get back into performing. Um, uh, I want to be a portrait painter. I want to paint people's portraits. Um, I want to create amazing food and, and uh, settings and experiences for people so that they see things um, with the same excitement that I do. Uh, my thoughts on this are, um, there was a conversation of who, do, who does this best? And the person that I, I admire the most is this guy, Anthony Bourdain. He was the naked chef. Um, he's no longer with us, unfortunately. But he was this incredible chef who started in New York as a dishwasher. And he worked himself up um, through the ranks to become um, this incredible chef. And he was a published author. He wrote books. He had a television program. He had a television program. And all of those things were inspiring. But the thing that was most inspiring about Anthony Bourdain was that he inspired people not only with his creativity, but with his humanity. He saw the human experience and he saw all people in um, uh, the same light. And he wanted to help people and he wanted to teach people about how to be good and how to help each other and love each other and create peace. And to me, um, he's my hero. That's the guy that I want to be most like. Um, and when we read the, the invitation, uh, the author said, I don't know, I don't care about what you work, how, where you work, what your job is, or how much money uh, you make. I want to know what do you ache for. And I ache for the chance to help improve the human condition by helping others see their world through their own unique creative lens. Um, once you've been able to do that, and I'm fortunate enough to be able to have been able to do that throughout my life, you see the world in this incredible way uh, that is unspeakably beautiful. And that's what I ache for. I want other people to see that. And um, uh, I want them to create their own exquisite moments and, and to help us love one another um, better the way Anthony Bourdain did. So what lights me up? Um, like I said, turning um, other people on. Turning other people on to understanding their own creativity and expressing it in whatever way they want to do that. They may want to express their creativity through mathematics or through food or through film or through music or creating a podcast or um, interior design. Creativity can um, come into our lives in any number of ways. So my insights on this is that at my core, this is who I am and who I have always been, a creator, a creative person, an artist, if you will. Um, it's incredible that uh, 
Um, I knew that at, at such an early age, but I deviated off that path. Uh, I studied English literature in university. I did an honors degree in that, and that was amazing in terms of allowing me to express myself and communicate with others um, in a tremendous way. I got into advertising as an account executive. I worked my way through the ranks to a VP of several agencies. And the last few years, uh, probably the last 20 years, I've worked in the digital media field, um, um, application development and IT, uh, uh, digital transformation, those sorts of things, which is nuts because when I was a kid, I didn't even want to touch a computer. And now I am uh, a computer nerd and I help my clients uh, communicate um, through uh, digital means. So why haven't I um, cultivated the artist in me that I really should have. Um, and I think the answer to that, the insight to that is I haven't given myself permission to do that, uh, to be truly who I am. And uh, there's a bunch of reasons for it. I won't go into now, but my biggest breakthrough uh, that I've been coming to since uh, uh, coming here and meeting with John and with, uh, with Greg at the Still Center Retreat is now is the time. Now is the time. Now I have to do this because if not now, when? I, I ache to do this. This is who is at my my inner core people who see me creatively they say that's who paul is he's that creative guy who plays guitar um, draws pictures makes people laugh um, it creates great food and all of those sorts of things so i i don't want to focus on the how i just want to do it and um, the monetization model um, we'll figure that out um, it's primarily going to be funded through the development of this Polly's food works which i'll, I'll go into uh, right now about it but there's something to be said about um, follow your bliss and uh, follow your heart, do what you love and, and the rest will follow, the money will follow. That's the model I want to uh, focus on right now. So Polly's Food Works um, came out of um, me um, being dissatisfied with a couple of products. I like, I'm a mixologist, I love alcohol and I like gin and tonics. I really love gin and gin has seen a huge renaissance uh, in the market. People are um, really turned on to all of these high-end gins, uh, but the tonic is the problem. Um, tonic is uh, uh, very high in sugar, and the sugar is there to combat the bitterness of the quinine, which is the essential element in tonic. And I thought, what a shame. You, you got this beautiful bottle of gin that you spent $75 on, and you don't have a premium tonic to mix with it. And the, one, the premium tonics that are on the market, they're in the bottle, they're not that great. So I, over two years, I perfected a recipe. I make ton, a tonic elixir. The way it was made originally by the Spanish, um, using quinchona bark, which is harvested in uh, Chile, you make a tea and you steep it with uh, essential herbs and botanicals like lemongrass and citrus and juniper berries and um, cardamom and uh, all of these different things. It's then um, um, distilled with uh, citric acid and sweetened with agave syrup, which is much lower in sugar. So when I produced this product, I started testing it with people and they said it was the best gin and tonic that they had ever tasted. It has that mouth pucker. It has an amber color. So the, the way you work it is, is you put an ounce of my elixir in and then you put an ounce of your gin in and then you fill it up with, with sparkling water. And it has this beautiful effervescence and this beautiful uh, amber color to it, which is, which is highly unique but it still um, has the quinine in it, which was an anti-malarial. <laughs> That's the crazy thing is, is that quinine was invented to ward off malaria with uh, uh, Spanish explorers. It was the English who couldn't stomach it and they added sugar and citric, uh, citrus and alcohol to it to make it more palatable and thus the gin and tonic was born. So I'm creating it the way the tonic was created 500 years ago. I did this and I test marketed it to 200 customers and I did focus groups with them. Of course, my advertising experience came into play there. And unanimously, people said, this is an incredible product, exquisite. Like, And I wanna be able to share this with my guests the way you're sharing it with me. The food writer for the Globe and Mail was at a party. He tasted it and he said it was the best gin and tonic he'd ever had. So I have all this amazing validation that I haven't been able to do anything with this product because there are a lot of, a lot of components to it that are um, um, truly challenging, but I want to get through those and that's why I'm here. So if I truly am a creator, I need to create. I need to get get these things going and I need to listen to my voice and not the voices of other people. I can't listen to them. If I'm going to be an entrepreneur and a creator, an artist doesn't take advice from somebody and paint pictures the way they want it to. They go, no, I'm doing this and if you like it, you like it. And if you don't, you don't. And that's what I'm doing. 
So it's no longer acceptable for me to please others. And that's part of part of who I am too. I'm a pleaser. I and must now please myself. I need to listen to my inner voice and I need to please myself. So the actions I need to take here, I need to complete my business plans. I've started them and I, I have two products. I have a, a Bloody Caesar mix as well. That is uh, a mixture of clam juice and tomato and, and other things. And um, you mix that with vodka. It's a very Canadian drink. Uh, you may not have heard about it. It's like a Bloody Mary, but um, um, with a seafood taste. And uh, it's incredible. It's our national drink. So I want to launch both of those products. And I need to uh, complete my business plans. But in order to do that, I can't do it on my own. It's overwhelming, the, the number of components. I, I like There are so many factors that are uh, stumping me. I took two days to try and find a, an insurance company that could provide me with a uh, product assurity. So if I sell my product in retail, I have insurance coverage for uh, the event of someone getting ill or spoilage, those sorts of things. It was, it was incredibly laborious and I didn't get anywhere with that. I have issues with um, shelf stabilization and, and getting the product ready for market. Uh, the marketing part is easy, but then just the overall um, organization of getting the product off the ground is tricky. So I, I need to get that going and um, there's a number of uh, resources I can use that can help me. There's George Brown College in Toronto and that's the preeminent college for culinary skills. They have a food starter program where they marry um, different entrepreneurs. So you might be in a class with a baker, uh, a butcher, um, somebody who's launching a beverage, somebody who's creating wine and you share your experiences. So I help them with the marketing part of it or the brand development. They help me with this, the food science part. I need to get involved with these things so that I don't feel stifled and I don't feel alone. And um, that's that's a big part. Uh, I need to develop a go-to-market uh, fulfillment. Um, so I need to actually go to market. I need to get this product in the market and it scares me. Um, but I need to do that and I need to do it, first of all, in a small way, maybe uh, local gourmet shops uh, where I can manage uh, any issues that come up uh, and then maybe go to um, some medium uh, food food retailers uh, or maybe there's partnerships with distilleries or uh, the Liquor Control Board of Ontario like where, where people go to buy um, uh, alcohol products. I don't know. I have to explore that. Um, and the other thing is I have to reignite partner opportunities. So I've spoken with a number of distillers, um, co-packers or, or companies who will take your product and they will produce it from start to finish. Uh, so you don't have to create it in your kitchen or you don't have to rent a kitchen or develop a, a, a production facility to do it. So I want to talk with those companies again. And then I need to talk with retail partners and, and other places. So once I get that off the ground, I, I'm hoping that the monetization from that and personally, th that alone would be huge. I'd love to do that. Um, but there's so many other things that I want to do, as I stated in the beginning here. I want to share my creativity with the world. And I look at Polly's Food Works as a vehicle to do that. Um, it's going to be incredibly fun to bring that product to market, but um, maybe I'll sell that business or who knows, but I want to get more into um, getting people lit up the way I get lit up about music, for example, number one, music, love it. Um, the way it connects people, the way it heals your soul, the way it makes you feel uh, alive and um, heard and uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. Food is a big part of it too, experiences. And then I wanted to get back into drawing and, and creating artwork. I want to share all of this with everybody because it's, it's in me and uh, I'm proud of it and I'm excited about it. And um, uh, now is the right time. <laughs> so the gift of shift, what are the things that I can use um, to uh, get me over that inertia? It's just it's just get the ball rolling, Paul. Get, get things, do something, do anything, but don't keep doing what you're doing because it's not fulfilling me anymore. This is what I need to do. So it's follow my bliss and do what you love and the money will follow. Um, take a leap of faith. Uh, and it's not really even a leap. It's just a, a jump into what I know and what I want to do. My biggest obstacle is my head. Um, I'm in my head too much. And you know, there's all these things. Um, like I said, the inertia, just do something. Um, uh, sometimes I say to myself, I don't deserve it. I haven't earned it. Um, play it safe. My, my mom's favorite, favorite line is just play it safe. Just, just do, do the safe thing. You can fall back on that if the other thing doesn't work. You know, what if it doesn't work, Paul? Um, maybe I'm not good enough. All of these voices in my head, it's time for me to let them go and just move forward with it. So that's my dream. And, um, now I'm going to make it happen. 
and um, I can't wait to tell you about the next stage of it because it's going to be amazing and um, I'm going to finally uh, there's still lots of time left for me to do what I love and to share that with the world and uh, here we go so look out